After 20 years of enterprise experience, making the switch to indie development means I needed to unlearn some habits that work great in large enterprise software, but will kill a solo project. I've identified five of these patterns and I'm gonna share them with you so you can save time and ship your application faster. But first, just to be clear, these patterns aren't bad. They actually solve problems at scale, but they assume resources that you don't have, like dedicated teams, known requirements, millions of users. If you already have tens of thousands of users, maybe some of these patterns apply to you, but if you're one of the 99% of any developers that are starting from zero, then you wanna pay attention so you don't make these mistakes. Because the number one killer of indie projects isn't bad code, it's wasting time. So by the end of this video, you'll have a checklist so you'll be able to see if you're making any of these mistakes. So the first pattern I wanna talk about is using too many abstraction layers. We've seen it before in enterprise code. You wanna have an ORM and then around that, you wanna have a repository. And then the repository is used by a service and then the service is used by a controller. And in between all these, you have interfaces that the repository and the, and the service implement. So you end up with six different files and three of those are interfaces. And anytime you wanna make a change going forward, you have to make a change to every single file down the line. Let's be realistic here. You're probably never gonna switch your database. And you're also probably never even gonna add a second implementation of those interfaces you wrote. So a lot of these classes are not even necessary. And even the service layer in between the controller and the repository, do you even really need that? you might be better off just going straight from your controller to your ORM, and then as you add more logic in, you could refactor in the future if you need to. But if you don't need to make any changes, then you've just saved a lot of time. Having all these extra abstraction layers is just a tax, and you pay that tax initially when you first write the code, writing all the extra lines of code that you're never gonna go and touch again, and then you have to pay it in the future as well if you have to make any changes, because now you're changing like five different fields just to change one little feature. So try to minimize those abstraction layers until you actually need them. The second pattern is related to the first one, and that is you don't wanna use microservices out of the gate. Just like in your code, having all these abstraction layers, in your architecture, microservices are just a way of adding more abstraction layers. And you're not going to need them when you're not even at the point where you're scaling yet. In the enterprise world, you're gonna have a separate microservice for users, for payments, for notifications, for every single different type of thing you're gonna be interacting with, you're gonna to wanna to have a separate service so you can keep all these things separate. But that works against you when you're trying to work fast in a solo project. You're adding distributed complexity in order to even get any of the, the work done. You Anytime you have to debug anything, you don't have to work across all those different systems to figure out where the problems are actually happening, as opposed to just looking in one code base and, and one set of logs. The complexity of deploying your application significantly increases as well, because now you have to worry about you know eight different moving parts instead of one or two. Ultimately, you're optimizing for a problem that you wish you had, but that you don't actually have. Instead of doing microservices, you should really be creating either a monolith where the front end and the back end are all in one single application, or at most, you should have one back end and then one front end where the two talk to each other, but the back end is not split up into multiple services or anything. It's all just one monolithic back end service. The perfect case study to prove this point is Instagram. It originally ran as a monolith on Django and it still scaled up to handle millions of users using that architecture. The third pattern you need to avoid is overcomplicating your authentication. In enterprise software, you often have hard requirements around what systems you need to use. Maybe you have to use your existing authentication server or maybe Maybe you have to use OpenID Connect or OAuth or SAML to talk to something existing. Um, you know, maybe because your your software is complicated, you have this whole granularity of roles that you want to control. You need audit logs, uh, password requirements. All these things are already handed to you by your enterprise, and you have to implement them to make sure that, that you're compliant. Well. If you're dealing with a solo project, a lot of these can be completely skipped or avoided because you don't need to make your authentication complicated. With enterprise software, with enterprise authentication, there are people whose entire jobs, their entire day job is spent on just authentication. And with your solo project, you don't have the bandwidth to worry about that. So instead, you should be starting with a simple authentication system that you're using through an existing library or an existing authentication service that you can use and get started with quick and easy. Maybe you're simply just starting with an email and a password or magic links. Those are probably the easiest to start with. If you do need any type of permissions, make them simple. 
is you know user, admin, and maybe that's it. Don't try adding OAuth at this point. If your users really need them at some point, go ahead and add them, but they probably aren't going to actually ask for them. So don't add them from the beginning. You'd be surprised how many different websites started with just a username and a password and eventually added everything in once they got bigger. I mean, even like GitHub and Facebook both just started with usernames and passwords. Pattern number four to avoid from enterprise code is over testing your code, meaning writing too many unit tests. In the enterprise way, you wanna get as close to 100% coverage as possible. Well, that takes up a lot of time and you end up testing things that don't matter. If you've ever had to write a test for a getter or a setter of a bean, you understand what I mean. Those type of tests are useless, but in the enterprise world, you do that because that's the policy. Well, in the indie world, you wanna only be testing the things that matter, anything that's critical path, anything that could potentially cause a problem for you in production, sure, write tests for that. If you actually do have bugs that come in, okay, write unit tests to cover that bug and other additional test cases so you can fix that bug and have confidence in that fix. But don't try testing everything because you don't even know what code you're gonna end up keeping or throwing out at some point. So if you end up writing tests for code that you just then throw out because the feature's not used, you just wasted a lot of time. And sometimes just writing the tests takes longer than writing the code. So you're really slowing yourself down. Now I'm all for unit tests, but you just have to be realistic about what tests you're writing so you can still ship quickly. And moving on to the fifth pattern, that's over-optimizing way too early. And that means over-optimizing your architecture. Things like adding in Redis to cache data or adding in a CDN so that your 12 files can be served as fast as possible to your users or adding database read replicas or introducing Elasticsearch when you could just be doing a like query on your database. These were great in enterprise solutions, especially when you already have teams of people that are already maintaining Elasticsearch or Redis or CDNs for other groups in your organization. But if you're the one that has to actually maintain them, that's gonna take your focus off of your goal, which is actually shipping new features that your, that your users can actually use. So again, you're optimizing for a problem you don't have, which is scale. At some point you might need it, but for now, chances are your Postgres database is going to be enough. So remember, boring tech you understand and can easily manage is always gonna beat exciting tech that you don't understand and is gonna be difficult to maintain in the future. If you wanna get an idea of whether you have any of these patterns in your solo project, here's a quick checklist for you. Number one, does it take longer than five minutes to deploy your code? Number two, does it take longer than 10 minutes to explain your code to a junior dev? Number three, are you building for more than 10 times your current user base? Number four, do you have more infrastructure code than feature code in your code base? And number five, are you spending more time trying to make things the right way versus making things the user's way? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you're probably over enterprising your solo application and you should go back and look to see where you can simplify things so you can ship your application faster. So remember, your indie project is not enterprise software. Your superpower as a solo developer is the ability to move fast and stay simple. Every pattern that I showed you makes a trade-off of simplicity for scale that you don't have yet. So ship first and scale later because most new projects die from complexity. What enterprise pattern do you think is holding you back? Drop it in the comments. Let's help each other ship faster. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.